Please welcome Broadcom Senior Vice President and General Manager, Ram Vallega. Good morning. Uh, what I want to highlight today is the role that Ethernet plays, Ethernet networking plays in building very large AI systems. You've seen earlier the presentation from Meta, and essentially them talking about the amount of compute that's going to get deployed over the next you know, few years is an order of magnitude larger than anything that we have seen in the last couple of years, right? And there's some interesting statistics out there, which is the gigawatts of power that's going to get deployed in the next couple of years is more than the entirety of this you know, power for uh, data centers that has been deployed in the past. So with that, with that in mind, one thing I do want to make sure we touch on is machine learning slash AI is a distributed computing system, right? When you think about it, what is distributed computing? It is essentially the idea that the workload cannot be run on one GPU. So what do you have to do? You have to have many of these GPUs connected together so that they're acting as if they're one large system, right? So when you think about a system problem, it's always this idea that you have to balance the resources. The resources that need to be balanced are compute, storage, and networking, right? So you could have a scenario where you have a lot of compute resources, but you don't have enough memory, and you're hitting a memory wall. Or you have, might have a scenario where there may be memory available in another island, and, but the compute is not able to reach it. And then you hit a networking you know, wall, not being able to connect these things. So as you go through you know, either today or just kind of start to think about this problem, the whole idea is this is a distributed computing system. It's a distributed computing system of scale that we've not seen before. So it is always about how do you connect these things together? Either they are inside a rack, across racks, or across data centers. And that's really the role that Ethernet's going to play. So what I want to touch on as we go through the next you know, five, 10 minutes is how do you connect these large number of XPUs slash GPUs together? I use XPU as a generic term to talk about different kinds of GPUs. So I use the term a little bit interchangeably, right? So how do you connect many of them together? You basically hear two concepts out there. The idea that there is a scale up, and then there's an idea that there's a scale out, right? Simply put, what is a scale up? A scale up is you're trying to connect within the rack. And when you connect within the rack, usually you're talking about the orders of a few tens. Sometimes it is, you know, 30, sometimes it is 60, in the order of tens, and it usually fits within the rack. Then you hear the idea of a scale out. When you think about a scale out, you're now talking about thousands. I, you know, the, the slides that Ola has shown earlier, you saw these things going from a few thousands to tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands, okay? So that's the two things to remember. There is a scale up and a scale out. Scale up is very simply smaller domain within rack, scale out, much larger domain, across racks, inside a data center, sometimes even between data centers. The interesting thing is a couple of years ago when we talked about this idea of a scale out, the only thing that you heard about was the so-called technology of InfiniBand, right? People said, look, you gotta do this with InfiniBand. If you don't do it with InfiniBand, the performance is not, of the system is not going to be that great. The reality is today, if you look at it, the largest 10 plus deployments in the world, all of them are connected over ethernet for scale out because why? Because Ethernet has been fundamentally built to be scalable, resilient, and open, right? So the scale-out debate is done. Today, when you look at scale-up, there's discussions about, well, maybe you should use NVLink or somebody you know, who's got their GPUs and who essentially are shipping most of the GPUs today, they'll insist it has to be NVLink. But the reality is, just like InfiniBand was a thing of the past, I can tell you that even in NVLink going forward can and will be replaced for scale up with something like Ethernet. Again, for very simple reasons, that Ethernet is going to be highly scalable, very resilient, and open. And we'll talk a little bit about how and why we can achieve this. Now, when you think about it, first from a scale up standpoint, here is a tremendous opportunity for everybody who's lived their lives in networking, right? You look at scale up and say, what's the bandwidth that is needed for scale up? And I want to share with you here, 
It's just a very simple example. This picture shows two XPUs slash GPUs. Each one of them has four HBMs. HBM is high bandwidth memory. Today, each of these HBMs roughly has about 9.6 terabits per second bandwidth with which it is connected to the XPU. If you have four of them, that's roughly about 40 terabits of bandwidth I'm rounding up, right? Now, when you look at the next generation of XPUs coming out, they'll have HBM4, and they could have up to eight of these HBMs, which means collectively the amount of memory bandwidth that is connected to each of these XPUs is about 100 terabit. Now, when you think about a system where there are two of these XPUs and they're trying to talk to each other because there is memory available on XPU B that the compute on XPU A is trying to access, it needs equivalent to that 100 terabits of bandwidth tomorrow or 40 terabits of bandwidth today to connect to the XPU that is sitting next to you. That is why when you think about this, you know, a system that is balanced between compute, memory, and you know, networking, and you think about this being a distributed system where you want many of these connected together, you can see why there's so much bandwidth needed and so much networking is needed, right? Once you start to grasp this concept, you'll start to say, okay, look, you know, today there's about 5 million plus GPUs slash XPUs being sold. And even if just, you know, 25% of them are connected on scale-up, by the way, that's a very small number, it's a much higher percentage are connected all with the scale-up. And the kind of bandwidth that you see coming out of each of these XPUs is as large as it is today, going larger tomorrow, we're talking about a tremendous amount of networking that is needed to sustain this bandwidth, right? So, say, okay, so what are the main things you have to think about when you're solving this, you know, interconnect between XPUs? One, bandwidth, I've shown you just previously. Second is you want to have a very efficient data transfer, right? When, you know, memory is being accessed from one XPU, the memory that is sitting on another XPU, and it's maybe moving, you know, chunks of data in 64 bytes or so, you don't want to have a very heavy, heavy networking overhead attached to each of these data transfers. So you want the data transfer to be very efficient. And the third thing you want is that data transfer to be very reliable, right? Because when you have the memory directly attached to that XPU, generally you won't have, you know, memory access failures. But when you have that memory being reached remotely, you have this connectivity related failures because of a link being you know, not that optimal and so on and so forth. So you wanna make sure there's reliability in that connectivity. So when you think about these saying, hey look, I need a lot of bandwidth, I need you know, a very reliable connection and I really need very efficient transfers, are all of these problems being solved? And I would say absolutely, all of these problems are being solved. When you think about ethernet switches, 50 terabits is a thing of the past. You know, two, three years ago, 50 terabit switches started to ship. Soon you'll hear about 100 terabits of Ethernet switches. You know, thereafter you'll have a couple of hundred terabits of Ethernet switches coming out. Each of these are going on faster and faster Ethernet speed 30s links, going from 50 terabits to, I'm sorry, 50 gig 30s to 100 gig 30s to 200 gig 30s. The other thing that's happening is you're trying to reduce the cost of the interconnect, right? When you're connecting two of these, you know, devices together, Ideally, you would try to connect over copper because copper has the lowest cost, highest reliability. But the problem with copper is its reach. Now, if you're trying to connect many of these XPUs together, you have to go beyond copper. And a lot of you have heard about the challenges with building these racks, which are connected over copper and not being able to ship in volume because a lot of the issues related to trying to compact something into very, very narrow spaces. Now, some of those problems can be solved with newer technologies on the optic side, co-packaged optics, linear optics, and so on and so forth. And all of this is essentially going to break away today the glass wall that's created by copper, right? The next thing that's obviously happening is for all of this to be done well and continue to reduce the amount of power they consume, very advanced process nodes are being used for these you know, products, right? Both in terms of the XPUs as well as the ethernet switches which are being built going from five nanometers to three nanometers and two nanometers. So there's a lot of work and a lot of products happening that you will start to see over the next three to six months that will make scale up over ethernet very viable, ready for deployment in a matter of couple of quarters from now. So beyond bandwidth, as I mentioned to you, the things that we have to address is to make sure that ethernet is addressing low latency because essentially you're moving memory from one XPU to the other and you don't want to have a lot of, lot of latency in that you know, transfer. You want to make sure the networking overhead is very small compared to the amount of data that's being transferred. 
That's why the whole idea of optimized header comes into play. Then as I mentioned before, it has to be a very reliable transport. So if there is any packet drops or you know, data that is being dropped from one XPU to the other, that you're able to reliably retransmit that data very, very quickly. If there is congestion that is happening between these two machines or between any of these machines, that the congestion is also being dealt with, right? So some of these fundamental things about very high bandwidth, reliable you know, transport, as well as making sure it's very, very efficient is the things that you know, need to be addressed and will be addressed in these products. Now, with that, what you can essentially say is, look, you can very easily do a scale up on ethernet, whether that is a 64 you know, XPU rack or 128 XPU rack. And I can tell you today, you know, two years from now, you'll actually see racks which have, you know, a, or a collection of racks which can scale up to 512 plus XPUs being connected together on scale up, right? And what we are doing here as Broadcom is a couple of things. You know, we believe at the end of it, when you look at the opportunity ahead, we're talking about billions of dollars of infrastructure in networking that is going to get deployed. And for the ecosystem to come together and make this happen, we wanna make sure we have specs available to the entire community. And the two sets of specs we are making available, one, what you do at a rack level, but also more importantly, everything that I've talked about right now in terms of a technology for scale up, we have a specification that's essentially going to be available to the OCP community for you to build products on and also innovate and revise them going forward. If you look, click on this QR code here, it'll give you a link which gives you access to the specifications that kind of shows you how we are going to be building scale up systems with ethernet. But more importantly for this community to take those specs improve them and build products with them. So what I do want to leave everybody with is hopefully I've kind of helped simply explain what's happened with scale out on ethernet being deployed. But more importantly, that scale up is a tremendous opportunity for all of us ahead. It can be done on ethernet and there's a lot of uh, opportunity here in terms of bandwidth and building a product that makes this come together. So that's what I want to touch base on. Thanks a lot. We appreciate your attention.